They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose path sustains the world he has made, who loves us, though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. As we give thanks for his great works, we remember those who have lived and died in his service and in the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that he may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. Most merciful God, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage and comfort others and support those working for the relief of the needy and for the peace and welfare of the nations. Lord God, God our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit, give us wisdom, give us courage, give us hope, and keep us faithful now and always. Amen.
Danes who gave their lives in the First World War. C. E. Akers, R. Anderson, F. Ashby, A. Barber, F. Barnes, R. Barnfather, L. Bachelor, W. Bachelor, W. Beal, F. Bird, J. Blackman, J. Bolton, W. Brown, J. Barnett, J. Burnett, G. Canfield, J. Carr, F. Cashford, F. Coomer, W. Coulson, W. Crampton, G. Cressy, J. Cripple, W. Dunster, a. Earl, R. Edwards, W. Ellett, R. Faulkner, G. Fieldwood, V. Ford, A. Foster, L. Foster, W. Francis, W. Funnel, J. Gander, C. Gasson, C. Green, F. Grinter, E. Hall, F. Hanmore, S. Halo, J. Hewitt, W. Histed, J. Hollenby, C. Holland, J. Hollindale, H. Hollindale, C. Homersham, A. Horsecroft, E. Household, C. Hughes, F. Hyde, A. Izzard, J. Jenner, G. Keys, J. Keys, W. Kent, A. King, G. Lade, T. Lade, W. Larkin, H. Latter, H. Latter, a. Mantilla, E. Mansbridge, R. Marsh, L. Marshall, H. Martin, F. Martin, F. Maynard, R. Mealy, W. Moon, W. Morell, G. Oxenbridge, A. Packer, C. Peerless, W. Peerless, S. Pete, H. Pick, C. Peasley, H. Piper, J. Pratt, F. Rackley, R. Sergeant, C. Saunders, R. Scriven, A. Sellings, H. Small, A. Smallwood, A. Smithen, W. Spark, G. Sparrow, J. Stebbings, C. Stevens, P. Tanner, H. Thompson, J. Till, S. Till, F. Turner, W. Turner, J. Vane, F. Widler, W. Widler, E. Wayne, H. Wakeford, W. Walsh, F. Waters, G. Waters, W. Welfare, F. Weller, L. Weller, C. Winch, W. Wood, H. Woodward, D. Young, and F. Young. Now for the Roll of Honour of those who gave their lives in the Second World War. S. Crouch Baker, H. Brown, H. Chapman, 
G. Gillian Lax, H. Goldsmith, J. Goodwin, C. Groves, H. Hawkins, S. Household, N. Hallam, A. Izzard, G. Jenkins, N. Jenkins, R. Lancer, A. Mepham, A. Meyer, C. Miles, R. Morris, W. Hawkins, J. Morris, N. Ovenden, H. Page, W. Pitson, R. Phillips, J. Russell, T. Sefton, H. Simmons, A. Signor, D. Smith, M. Smith, H. Stanley, F. Stewart, F. Sutcliffe, J. Turner, R. Webley, F. Wheeler, J. Whiting. A total of 151 names from this parish who gave their lives in both world wars. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love we cannot be parted either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day, fulfilling them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we recognise our responsibility to encourage and uphold one another and to live together in peace and love. We also recognise our needs and our human weaknesses and come to you now with our prayers and petitions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for our church leaders that they will be guided in their ministry by the influence of the Holy Spirit and that the Church, in the power of the Spirit, may make the Gospel understandable to people of every race, language and culture. We pray that the Holy Spirit of Peace may unite and reconcile the peoples and nations of the earth, bringing an end to war, hatred and discrimination. We especially pray for those who lead our worship for Ronnie and Michael, and for Tim and Daphne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for your world, of which your Son is King. We pray for peace, reconciliation and healing in the places of war, hatred and terrorism. We pray that the nations of this world may be united and subject to the rule of Christ the King through whom and for whom all things were created. We pray our gracious Sovereign Queen Elizabeth that her reign may continue to be guided and influenced by the example set by your Son Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women who serve in the Navy, the Army or the Air Force, at home and abroad. Defend all who face danger and put their lives at risk so that others might live in safety and give them the courage to face the perils of active service. Comfort all worried families whose loved ones are in danger. Surround them with your love, protect them from all harm 
and help them to know that nothing can separate them from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for medics and chaplains and all who support the suffering. Give them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience to minister to the sick and wounded and to all prisoners and captives. We especially pray for all who returned from the field of combat with injuries, both physical and mental, which have ruined their lives, and for the charities and organisations which support them in their convalescence. From our own parish community, we pray for Jeanette's father, Roger Burton, for Justin Woodhouse, who continues to recover from surgery, and for Valerie Pentecost, whose severe arthritis is forcing her to remain at home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At the start of another period of lockdown here, we pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus around the world. We pray for governments and authorities who are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus, and those in the health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick patients. Bring comfort to those grieving loved ones who have died and peace to those worried, fearful and uncertain as the virus spreads. We pray for all our friends and families and ask for your blessing and protection for them as they try to carry on with some sort of normal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for those fallen in battle who gave their lives in the cause of freedom and in defence of peace and justice. We remember too all civilians and non-combatants who died in the fighting. Surround all who are bereaved with compassion and give them a patient faith in their suffering. We especially continue to pray for Daphne Hodges following the death of her husband Victor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, wash away the wounds of war, violence and hatred. Help us to remember that our Lord said, Blessed are the peacemakers, and to know that if we really wish for a peaceful world, we should honestly pray, Let it begin with me. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading today is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5, the mountain of the Lord. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted above the hills and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation nor will they train for war any more. Everyone will sit under their own vine and under their own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid. For the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods, but we will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, for ever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
1919, the Armistice Day silence was officially observed for the first time. We continue that tradition as fervently more than a century later on Armistice Day and at Remembrance Sunday. Yes, this year is different from any I have known in my lifetime. Covid has forced us to remember the fallen in a quiet and reflective way, possibly in our homes. Sadly, the joint service and the falling of poppies in our parish church has, this year, had to be dismissed with. But it does not mean that we should not remember and we do so this morning solemnly. The names of the fallen from Russ Hall have been read here as they always have done with respect and gratitude for lives given up in order that we may live ours. But why do we gather for this act of remembrance and thanksgiving, even perhaps at home this morning? I remember growing up in South London as a member of the Boys Brigade. The memories of war were quite raw when I was growing up, and a particular memory for me was the big metal driver of the number 126 London Transport Bus en route from Beckenham to Plumstead Common, which reached Mottingham at 10 minutes to 11 on Sundays, stopping the bus irrespective of passengers and timetable, climbing down and standing to attention as the two minute silence was observed, no doubt remembering fallen friends, and it had a profound effect on me to remind myself why we should always remember. So why do we hear the Bible read, hear the choir sing hymns, say prayers and endure sermons? There are many possible answers to that question. And I would like to offer you just two this morning. The first concerns the stories that surround war. Remember Sunday gathers together countless human experiences of the bravery, sacrifice and anguish of war and violence. The Remember Sunday gathers all these stories into churches such as this and places them in the context of the great Christian story of the violent suffering of Jesus Christ's crucifixion and the hope of the resurrection. One of the reasons we can fit our human stories of the sacrifice and pain of war into the Christian story is because Christianity never glosses over the human suffering and loss, that is, the inevitable outcome of war. The Christian story recognises the reality of human violence and I believe that in this fallen world it is sometimes necessary to fight and die for freedom and justice in defence of the vulnerable. Yet the Christian faith also teaches us that violence and sacrifice, the violence that crucified Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for our sins, that violence and sacrifice does not have the last word. It doesn't end there. Our hope lies in something more, another kingdom, a new life. In the resurrection of Christ lies our hope that the death of our servicemen and women and the grief that follows are not the end. There is more because God holds them in his life in an eternal hope of redemption and resurrection. And this is not wishful thinking. It's been the testimony of Christianity for over 2,000 years and the witness of St Paul's Church here in Rush Hall since the end of the First World War. The Christian faith is real enough that it can be proclaimed and prayed even on the battlefield especially on the battlefield where we are most in need of God's mercy. And that is certainly true of whether we are in church or whether we are in home, at home today. Even more, the Christian faith proclaims that 
despite the reality of conflict and self-sacrifice in the cause of justice and peace, war is not inevitable. It's an intrusion into creation and human society that comes from the sin and darkness of human hearts. In our lesson this morning, the prophet Micah, a book compiled in the 6th century before Christ, amidst bloody conflicts surrounding Israel, wrote, God shall judge between many peoples and shall arbitrate between strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. The sacrifices of the men and women of our armed services are not part of an inevitable and necessary pattern of war. We can say, in this Christian context, they died in the cause of a more basic peace ordained by God. They died not because war is inevitable, but so that war might be no more. And if only, if only we could learn from that. The second reason why we remember Remembrance Sunday concerns a basic and fundamental claim of the Christian faith. We are created. And every human life is unique and irreplaceable as a gift. And therefore, it is of infinite value. In this Christian context, our lives are not simply the outcome of a blind evolutionary process or the product of our culture or whatever we happen to want or do. Our lives are a unique gift that finds its ultimate source in a given, the mysterious source of all things that we call God, who created and ordered the world. If we understand that our life is a gift from a giver, this should make all the difference in the world to how we live, because it's not ours to do with simply as we please. So we start with thanksgiving to God for who and what we are that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, as the Bible puts it. Understanding our life as a gift means that life has a meaning in the way that any gift has a meaning, as a bond between giver and recipient. We need to think carefully and seriously about what we do with the gift of our lives, how we treasure it, enjoy it, and to what ends we live it. And I'm sure that these words resonate as we recall the rapidly rising figure in the United Kingdom who have lost their lives to COVID since the pandemic began. And perhaps it stirs a distant memory of those who were to survive the First World War only then to succumb to another pandemic, that of Spanish flu, which began in 1918 and cost 500 million lives worldwide. The four men and women whose names we remember with pride, thanksgiving and grief today gave the gift of their lives to what they believed was the cause of peace, justice and goodness. If you receive your life as a gift from God with thankfulness, to what will you in turn give your life? Will you live simply for your own gain? Although, or like those that we remember today, will you live for the peace, well-being and flourishing of others in the course of truth and justice? Our contemporary culture offers us many opportunities to live shallow, selfish and trivial lives. In the life of those who made the ultimate sacrifice in giving the gift of their lives on the battlefield, Today's remembrance service reminds us that we are God's gift and asks us to what would you give the gift of your life? For what cause and in the name of what good? It's the critical moral question we all face and it's posed particularly 
powerfully here today. As we remember the fallen in the peace of Rustall Parish Church and at home in the midst of a deadly pandemic which has grounded us when perhaps we would want to gather in our churches or at war memorials. In the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, the laying down of a life in freedom and peace, we see revealed the love of God who created us, gives us life and calls us into his kingdom of justice and peace. That hope has been carried onto the battlefield with the prayer that our lives may be given not for foolish and vain politics, but for the good and peace of all humanity. Blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the peacemakers, said Jesus. In remembering those who gave their lives in the bitterness of war, in the giving of our lives and the sacrifice of one another, in remembering that every human life is a gift of God of infinite value to be nurtured and treasured. May we be blessed as peacemakers and defenders of the vulnerable who strive first for the kingdom of heaven and the justice of Almighty God, to whom be ascribed, as is most justly due, all might majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, grant that we who now do honour to the memory of the fallen may be filled with the spirit of sacrificial courage, that, putting aside all selfish and unworthy aims, we may live together in the glory of your name and in the service of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.